Genesis chapter number 13. We again, read in verse number 1. The Bible says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Let me just stop right there. A lot of people say that you can't be saved and have anything. I've heard a lot of, a lot of Christian people talk down about you if you've got a little bit of change in your pocket. Well, the Bible says that Abram, who's the father of the faith, was very rich. Cattle and silver and gold. Go read Job chapter number 1. You'll find he was the richest man in the East. Now, God will save poor people. God also saved rich people. Huh? He lets it rain on the just and the unjust lights. Nowhere in my notes. Don't know why I had to say that. But if you think that uh, uh, you needed that, give God the glory. All right? But let's read on. Verse 3. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be bred brethren. It is, is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, and it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden uh, of the Lord, like in the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent Toward Sodom. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing, the good testimonies, being a good God. Now, Father, I thank you for the Word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, enlighten us. Help us, Lord, to put safeguards in our lives. And help us, Lord, to certainly hide the Word of God in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Bless those that are working with the teens. Bless those that are working with the children on the other side. And God, we certainly do pray that you'd help your people. Lord, send revival these days, and Father, will not fail to bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Very familiar. Everybody knows the story of Abram and Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah and those sorts of things. Uh, I want to draw your attention to a few things. Uh, can I say that God commanded Abram to get thee up out of the land that he had known and go uh, the, from the earth of the counties and to go into a land that he knew us not. Uh, can I say the writer of Hebrews tells us that Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Uh, Abraham left everything he known and he followed God by faith. And what a blessing. Uh, and I'm glad that there's still folks that follow God. Uh, there are folks that are willing to turn their back on everything they've known uh, to put God first in their life and to do what thus saith the Lord. Uh, There's only one problem. God told Abram to leave his country. Well, Abram did, but he took part of it with him. He took a lot. Mm, lot was not called by God to go with Abram. Mm, Abram let Lot, his nephew, go. Lot caused him a lot of problems. Can I say this? We wouldn't have the traumatic story of Lot's wife being turned to a pillar of salt if Abram would have obeyed God. Hmm? Can I say a lot of times when we add to or take away from the things of God, it affects a whole lot of other people that we never dreamed of. Yeah. 
Hmm? Can I say this as well, that they never had the strife between their herdmen. They would have never caused a conflict between Abram and Lot. They would have never had uh, all these things if Abram would have done what he was supposed to do. Now, I don't want to pick on Abram too much because Abram, you know, he, he'd go on and do a lot of great things for God, but he also had problems when he got down there into Egypt and he lied. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Uh, Abram had some problems. So Abram finally got right with God and got it all straightened out. But I'm just trying to tell you something tonight. You better be very careful because everything we do with every message we hear from God, with every service we're blessed with God, if we do not seek the Lord and put God first, it affects us other people and other uh, uh, families all around us. I, 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 I'm not really going to preach on that. I want you to look at three things as a way of introduction and we'll give you a little thought. This message is kind of a charge. This message is kind of one of them. You want to safeguard your heart. One of those that uh, you want to put some boundaries in your life. Uh, uh, can I say uh, all things are lawful for us but not all things are expedient for us. Uh, 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 I'm glad that uh, we're not a bunch of Pharisees tonight but uh, can I say the psalmist said my foot standeth in an even place. Uh, you've got to have a balance in your life. Uh, you can't be all law one side. You can't be all liberal the other side you're going to make your life a mess uh, but there are a lot of Christians that have the mentality uh, I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it and God will be pleased with it friend you better be careful you might be going down the wrong path uh, but I uh, noticed some things about Lot uh, uh, first of all I want you to notice that Lot saw look at verse number 10 and Lot lifted up his eyes can I say we're not saved by sight so then faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God you better be careful what you cast your eyes upon. Amen. Your eyes will deceive you. Hmm? Can I say the hand is quicker than the eye? Amen. Anybody watch that show, America's Got Talent? Every year they'll have magicians on, do crazy things, and I wonder how in the world that happened. Because hmm? them guys' hands are slick. That's why you don't trust in what you see. You better trust in what God says. Been a many of folks uh, 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 saw this pretty little thing or this pretty handsome thing and said, well, that's the one, only have their life end up in a mess because uh, they trusted in what they saw. Uh, there's been a lot of people uh, drove by and said, boy, that looks like a nice church. I want to go to that church. Uh, and they based on what they saw rather than what they heard. Are you listening? A lot of people get in a lot of trouble because of what they see. Hmm? That also ought to remind us that people are watching us. Better be careful what you allow them to see. Hmm? We saw that, or we, we noticed that Lot saw. And then notice the Lot selected. Look what he said in verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. You've heard me say this before in reading this text. I believe if uh, Lot would have went the other way and Abram would have went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, I believe Abram would have won Sodom and Gomorrah to God. He'd at least made a stand for God. Lot didn't. Lot looked around and said, boy, that looks like a nice place to raise a family. Boy, was he wrong. But he made his choice. Can I say, everybody makes their choice. Amen. As much as you'd like to see somebody get saved, as much as you'd like to see somebody get right with God, you can't choose that for them. They must make their own choice. Lot saw, Lot selected, but then notice Lot stayed. In verse number 12, and Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Uh, you've heard me use the analogy, if you, if you step in a mud puddle, get your foot out and get it cleaned off and go on down. Now go on down the road. Uh, Lot didn't get his foot out of the mud puddle, he stayed. He dwelled there. He stayed in the slime pit. Hmm? Now before we go any farther... I want you to realize something. Lot was a righteous man. Over there in 2 Peter, boy, you didn't seem like you agreed with that, well, so let me show it to you, huh? 2 Peter tells us in chapter number 2, uh, 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 the Bible says, verse 7, and deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelleth among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. 
He was a righteous man, but being away from righteousness, being away from truth, being away from holiness, all the wickedness he was around vexed his soul that, my dear friends, when it came time to get his family out of there, they mocked him because he had no testimony of righteousness. And can I say he was a man that you're going to see in heaven. Boy, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Mm -mm. This man saw something, he selected it, and then he stayed there. I do not understand. You cannot make me understand. Brother Josh, I do not understand what would cause somebody that knows God to dwell in a place or a situation that is so anti-God. I do not understand that. But Brother Clint, I've learned this in 45 years being saved. I haven't walked in their shoes, and I'm not going to judge them for it. Hmm? Yeah. I don't know why they stayed there, Brother Charles. I don't know why he hung out there. I don't know why uh, uh, when uh, Naomi uh, left with her husband and, and went down uh, away from uh, Bethlehem to Moab, uh, and her husband died, and her boys, I don't know why she stayed 10 years. But all I know, she said she went out full and came back bitter. Hmm? I don't understand what causes people to make the decisions they make. But I do know that Lot stayed there at the expense of his family. It cost him the dearest thing he had. Can I say, Brother Brian, I hope that you and I never get filled up with pride to where we make a poor choice and we let our pride keep us in that circumstance where it ruins our families. Hmm? A lot did. I've known a lot of Christians that made bad decisions, but because of their pride, they wouldn't get things made right with God, and it affected their entire families. Now, I'm interested in the last line of verse number 12. It said that he dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. I want to preach on this little thought. There's a, uh, one of those messages to put roadblocks in our lives. I want to preach on pitching your tent toward Sodom. God help us to never even look toward Sodom, let alone pitch our tent toward there. But let me give you some things to help you realize you might be already headed that direction. Can I say you know you've pitched your tent toward Sodom, when the wonder of God loses its splendor. Boy, this morning when we got to talking about him being astonishing and him being wonderful, uh, boy, it, it uh, certainly uh, flooded our souls with who he is. Uh, but friend, there were some here tonight, uh, this morning why many of you were rejoicing, uh, why many of you were excited, uh, why many of you were saying, yes, that's him. There were some here this morning that used to be excited but they weren't real excited this morning. They just might have already pitched their tents toward Sodom. You know you're in a bad place when the wonder of God loses its splendor in your soul. When somebody can stand up and talk about Calvary and thank for what God did for him, and that doesn't do something for you, my dear friends, there's something wrong going on in your soul. He might have just pitched his tent towards Sodom. Listen, a lot of times, Brother Bob, you don't have to physically pitch your tent down there, but in your heart you can already be heading that way. Hmm? You might just be pitching your tent towards Sodom when the wonder of God loses its splendor. Can I say this? You're headed in that direction when the word of God loses its effectiveness. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. I thank God there was a man preaching the word of God when I got saved. Uh, and nobody's going to ever get saved apart from the word of God. Uh, but can I say that's just the first brick of the foundation. Uh, he uses the word of God to bring us unto repentance. Uh, but then the word of God becomes the absolute final authority of our lives. Uh, and when preaching loses its effectiveness in our soul, we're in a wrong spot in our life. Hmm? I love preaching. I love preaching, and I love getting preached to. I love being around preaching. I love talking to preachers. We enjoy fellowshipping and talking about the Bible. 
But there's nothing like when a man of God gets up uh, and starts saying, Thus saith the Lord, uh, and God gets on him and anoints him, uh, 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 and the Word of God becomes real in your life. Uh, what a blessing! But when that precious Word of God loses its effectiveness in your life, it might be because you're headed towards Sodom. I've seen a lot of people sit in a church service only to go out and do some of the most heinous things. Why? Because the Word of God lost its effectiveness in their life. The whole time they're sitting there, their mind's somewhere else, their heart's somewhere else. Brother Phil, I'd like to have a dollar for every person I've seen sitting in a revival meeting, come to an altar and shed crocodile tears, and you can't even find them in this church service. Boy, that Word of God was real effective, wasn't it? I want to tell you something. The Word of God, it's a, it breaketh like a hammer. And when the Word of God breaks you, it will transform you and change you. But when the Word of God is preached and all you feel is remorse... It will have no effect on you. Hmm? When the Word of God is brought forth and the Spirit of God deals with you and you repent, it will change you. Hmm? But when the Word of God loses its effectiveness in your life, you might be just headed towards Sodom. I thought about this. You might be headed that way when the will of God loses its significance. I've seen people say, I know the will of God for my life. Hmm? Well, James, you're helping me tonight. Let me come back here and talk to you. You've been here a while. How many folks have you seen join this church saying it's the will of God for them to serve God here? Only to not be able to find them. Where are they at? They might be in Sodom. Hmm? Hmm? Now, listen, I'm not Holy Ghost Junior, but I have studied this book for a long time. And I find this, that the Bible says, Marcy, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes. He said, I am the Lord, I change yes. not. Amen. Show me anywhere in that Bible, Brother Clint, you're a student of the Bible, show me anywhere in that Bible where God changed his mind about something. See, there's God's will, and there's folks thinking they know God's will. But if it's God's will, my dear friends, unless something uh, the Holy Ghost does in your life to um, shed some more light to do something different, God don't change his will. Now, I've seen God call, call people to preach and call them out to take a church and do something in the ministry. I've seen where God uh, opened doors for folks to move and move out. But I'm here to tell you, if folks come in, they sit here for a little while, and all of a sudden uh, 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 they need their ears tickled somewhere else, and they go down to church down the street, and they're there for a little while, and they go, they got a real problem is what I'm trying to say. They don't know the will of God. But when the will of God loses its significance in your life, you might just be headed to Sodom. Hmm. Uh, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. He says, ask and you shall receive. Hmm? Uh, if you ask God to show you the will of God for your life, guess what he's going to do? Show you the will of God. See, God wants you to know his will. He wants you to abide in his will. God's never going to withhold his will from you. So if you seek the Lord for his will and he shows you his will and you abide in his will, that's the safest uh, and most blessed place you can ever be. You get out of the will of God, friend. That's the most dangerous place you can ever be. The Bible talks about whosoever breaketh the hedge, the serpent biteth. Hmm? You get out of the will of God, you're headed for some snake bites. Are you listening? But see, you might just be headed towards Sodom when the will of God loses its significance. It amazes me how many folks say, boy, this is the will of God for my life. And then face a little hardship and all of a sudden, no, God must have changed his mind. No, I don't think so. It might be like that first song we heard tonight. God might just be trying to make your life a blessing. Hmm? All right, that went over real good, but it's still true. Can I say you know you've pitched your tent toward Sodom when the worship of God loses your attendance? Hmm? You see, the Word of God says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. But when it's okay for you to just lay out a church, you might be headed towards Sodom. Now listen, I always like to qualify some things here. I know people are all ready to get jacked up. 
Let me help you. Brother Charlie and I've already discussed, he knows it. There are certain days he has to work. He's got one of them weird jobs where he's like on a week and off a week and on two weeks and off two weeks. And I don't know, you're just weird. That's all I can say. you got a name. <laughs> you couldn't have ever been a professional athlete because there's not enough. You know, I mean, you, you, they'd have to start here and go all the way around you with your name, huh? God understands. Now listen. He's providentially hindered when he has to work on a Sunday. We know that. Now I know there's the super duper Pharisaical Baptist. Well, bless God, you ought to quit that job and God to give him another one. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's pray God gives him another one until that one. You work that job till God gives you one where you're off on Sundays, huh? Yeah. Let's work it that way, because uh, God tells us uh, not to tempt him. Yeah. Hmm? True. Uh, he's got a pretty decent job. Now he could quit that and you know go work at a a candy store and sell some candy but he's probably not going to be able to feed them youngins he's got are you listening yeah. so he's providentially hindered God understands when you're providentially hindered when you was in the hospital you was providentially hindered when you had the flu you was, thank God you didn't come because we don't want the flu we love Janet we don't want the flu alright uh, and I'm, I'm quarantining Kevin and Sheila when they come back because I ain't getting no coronavirus running around through here huh? we're making them stay away for two weeks to make sure they don't have any symptoms alright well, there's, there's, there's this about being providentially hindered. God understands when it's out of your control. God doesn't understand when you're perfectly healthy and nothing's wrong with you and you just choose not to come. Hmm? And when uh, worship loses your attendance, you might be pitching towards Sodom. Let me, let me help you something. God expects you to be here. Now, if you're not providentially hindered, He expects you to be here. Hmm? There's no excuses. Now, here's the danger. If you don't show up, you're still as responsible for the message as if you'd been here. It's very important. God takes this serious. He gave His Son for this. Hmm? Now, let me just throw another anchor in it, since we're all just paying real close attention tonight. Let's say Brother Doug loses his mind. Brother Doug comes in and says, we're going to start using the NIV Bible. Brother Doug comes in and says, we're going to take Baptist off the, off, the, off the name of the church, and we're going to get a rock band, and we're going to do everything so we can get a crowd. Hmm? Brother Clint, if you don't grab me by the nape of my neck and drag me out of here and throw me out of here, uh, something's wrong with you. Huh? But can I say, it's happening everywhere. You know how many Baptist churches no longer have church on Wednesday night? Some of them no longer having church on Sunday night. Uh, uh, they can claim they're Baptists all they want to, but they're not earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered in the state. Let me say something. If somebody, if I was to say that, and all of a sudden Brother Randy made a motion, Brother Bob second, and the hierarchy of the church said, uh, yeah, that's the way we're going to go. Listen, you don't even have to pray about it. You need to run from a place like that because it's no longer staying true to the Bible. Bible. Right. But if they're preaching the book and the Spirit of God's a blessing and God's a showing up, He expects us to show up. Are you listening? Yep. Hmm? Hmm? Was that too hard to understand? No. Hmm? But those that know what the book says, for him to know to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. You know what filth, uh, vexed lots of soul that fit, made him filthy and unrighteous uh, 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 in his life and his testimony sin he hung around sin so much that it rubbed off on him you say preacher that's, that's been awful rough God called him a righteous man well if you go and read over there in Genesis when the angel of the Lord showed up to take, get him out of there the men the perverts of that city wanted them angels to do perverse things to them. And Lot, being the Mr. Righteous, super-duper Christian that he was, offered his two virgin daughters to the crowd. That's wicked. Hmm? You see, he got around sin so much, it rubbed off on him. You know why folks don't come back on Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and, and don't come back for a revival meeting? And you, you, you know why, why it is? It's not because they're providentially hindered. It's not because they're sick. 
it's because they've pitched their tent towards Sodom and they're making an excuse to justify why they're staying there. Hmm? They got sin in their life. Hmm? Listen, who wouldn't want to come out and worship Jesus? All he did was die for us. All he did was secure us. All he did is go to prepare a place for us. But I'm saying that to you and I that are here tonight because if we're not careful, we'll be slipping a little closer to Sodom. Because what happens, Brother Ray? God's got a will for your life. He's got a will for our li my life. He has fitly framed us together in this church. And he is causing us to be a part of his body. You have a load to carry. You have a load to carry. You have a load to carry. We all have a load to carry. But when they continually don't show up, that means we've got to help carry their load. And if you're not careful trying to carry your load and try to carry part of their load and trying to keep things going, guess what happens to you? You get overloaded. And you start looking at them. And I don't know about you, since I'm here, where's the ruby of the church? Have you ever seen that Sunday morning crowd that come in and we start having testimony services? Well, we don't have them one often when they're here because we don't have many on Sunday morning. But, but they get to talk about how blessed they are. And here you are trying to live for God. You're reading your Bible every day. You're, you're fighting hell by the inch. You know, it seems like everything you, you do, the whole, you know, imp, every imp to hell comes against you and you're struggling and it's all you can do to get back to the house of God. And they're here they're talking about their blessing and then the thought comes to your mind. Maybe I need to lay out church too. I'll get blessed as well. Huh? You ever have that thought? I've had that thought. Huh? I mean, I'm fighting to pay every bill I got. I'm fighting to do everything I can. You know what I'm saying? And they're coming in. Boy, I'm blessed. God been good to me. Open the mailbox. There's a check for 5000 Thing. Bless God, I opened my mailbox. I got more bills. What's the deal? I'm trying to do right. See, you start carrying that load and you get weak. And all of a sudden, you start having thoughts like that. You don't want to go down that route. You're pitching your tent towards Sodom. See, it's kind of like looking at the billboard. Boy, it looks wonderful. You see all these happy people on the billboard, having a party, playing volleyball, drinking Miller Lite. But you don't see what's on the other side of the billboard. They get to talk about how blessed they are, but you don't see how they really live. Come on. Huh? They really aren't blessed, not by God. No. Mm. I'm just trying to help you. Well, a lot of times they'll do things and say things and, and do things to try and, and it's kind of like I preached last night, it's ungenuine. They're doing it to show off or make a scene or try to prove their spirituality. In reality, their life's a mess. Yep. Hmm? You don't want to pitch your tent towards Sodom. You know you are when worship starts losing your attendance. I thought about this. You've pitched your tent towards Sodom when the work of God loses your interest. Now, I, I, I don't understand statements like what I've heard people say before. I've heard people say church is boring. I do not understand that. Hmm? Hearing about Jesus, gathering with God's people, singing about Jesus. Bless God, how could it be boring when you got Phil and Janet in the house? Huh? You never know what they're going to say. I'm just excited thinking, hallelujah, we're going to get into something tonight. going to be a blessing, huh? But really, when Jesus is being exalted, how can you be bored? Sure. Hmm? Huh? How can seeing those little children get saved in that last meeting we had, how did, how's, is that boring? That ain't boring, huh? There's nothing boring about the work of God. But when people start losing interest in the work of God, it's because they pitched their tent towards Sodom. Hmm? There's a lot of folks. Uh, listen, we all only have so much of an attention span. Brother Thad told me today he was hoping this new Bible would cause me to preach shorter. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. Well, he's done by 10 after 12 today. He said, works. It ain't right. I think we ought to church him. It's a good thing he sang good tonight. 
Uh, so y'all don't know what I have to put up with all the time. Now you know why I'm so mean all the time. <laughs> Bless God. I'm preaching my lungs out. I'm about to die up here. And he's like, can you go quicker? Come on. <laughs> uh, we only have so much of an attention span for things in our life. When people start losing interest in the church, it's because the things of the world have grabbed their attention. Hmm? And uh, make no mistake, the devil's got a lot of things out there to get your attention. That's why we've got to come back Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday school. Because we need as much of God in us as we can get in us because we're going to fight a nasty world throughout the week. But when the things of God start losing your interest, you've pitched, you pitched your tent towards Sodom. Now look, I've said all that say this. I know Sunday night are folks that want to be here that love God. Matter of fact, when God gave me this message, I said, Lord, why, why on Sunday night? Let me preach this Sunday morning. I said, no, you got to give him that's him on Sunday morning. I'm like, no, not, but this is what the crowd needs that. Huh? I guarantee you they wouldn't come back tonight. Huh? No, the Lord said, no, just let folks know. And you go back and you read over at 2 Peter chapter 2. The Bible talks about when he talked about righteous lot, he also talked about God knows how to reserve them for judgment who don't do right. God just wanted us to keep on the firing line, Amen. keep running straight, keep seeking after the Lord, keep putting Him first, and He'll take care of the rest of it. Are you listening? Don't let what happened a lot happen to you. Yeah. Don't start looking around at people. You get to looking at people, you're going to get jacked up. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? I'm going to tell you something. People are crazy. There are a lot of people got a lot of goofy ideals. A lot of people believe a lot of different things. Uh, don't get to looking at people. And, and again, as I said to Brother Clint earlier, I've not walked in somebody else's shoes. I really don't know what's going on in their life. But I'm here to tell you, if you, if you look at Lot in Genesis, you're having a hard time believing that's a righteous man. Hmm? But God called him a righteous man. So don't get to looking at people. That'll mess you up. Hmm? Don't get to looking around. And then don't get to making choices based on looking around. Make choices on based on looking in the book. Let God show you some things and choose what God says. That'll help you. And then certainly if you catch yourself having thoughts or looking around at somebody, don't stay there. You get your mind on Jesus and you'll be okay. All right? Because I'm here to tell you, God's got some things for us. We're hidden in a certain way. We don't want to get jacked up. We don't want to pitch our tents towards Sodom. Look, I'm glad you're here. We've had some that no longer are here. I'm glad you're here. Huh? Just keep sticking by the stuff. Huh? Yeah, Abraham didn't do everything right, but you read through Genesis. He ended up doing a lot of things right, and he's the father of a nation. You just keep doing right, and I promise you God will put his stamp of approval on your life and it will impact people's lives for Christ. That's what it's all about. Don't pitch your, lot, uh, your tent towards Sodom. It's not worth it. Hmm? Well, I know they paint a pretty picture. But it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just stay, stay with the book. Stay close to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Him. Keep encouraging others to put their eyes on Him. Above all things, don't be a phony baloney. Just be right. And my dear friends, there's no telling. What impact we'll have for Jesus. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. I tell you what, let's do this. The altar's open. You're certainly welcome to come pray. But why don't you really pray about just going around and encouraging people? We got folks that came out tonight. Why don't you go around and just let folks say, hey, I'm glad you're here. It's a blessing to see you. I'm glad that God's blessed your life, and I sure do appreciate you. So you just mind the Lord, Ray, come sing something. Some are praying. Some are going to shake hands. Some are going to hug nets, necks. But above all things, run from Sodom. Don't pitch your tent toward there, all right? All right, they're picking out a song. I tell you what, let's do this. You never get to shake hands. Your darling sister's back there. She can play the piano. Let her come play the piano. We'll shake our hands with her later. And Miss Renee will get to shake some hands, all right? Ray, you better pick out a song she knows how to play. Uh, 
she just looked at me like she's thinking, I wish I'd have pitched my tent towards Sodom right about now. <laughs> it's put people on spot night, and you're here. While they're deciding all that, let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for folks that stick by it, that long to please you. Lord, I pray for those that could have been here and that are not here. I pray that, God, you show them tender mercy and long-suffering. But, Lord, deal with them that we might see them put God first in their life. Bless now in this invitation, this time of fellowship, this time of whatever you desire this part of the service to be. God, get glory from it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.